In this video I'm going to show you all the settings for the label tool. The label tool is this guy here, just lives just below your text tool and essentially in its simplest form is text with a pointing arrow or a leader that can be turned on or off if you need to. The info box, the button at the top here is the settings for it, the settings dialog. The settings are exactly the same as what you see in the info box, just laid out slightly differently. I'll concentrate on the info box because you can see the settings and the label at the same time. At the very top here, we get to choose next to the settings button, the settings dialog box button, we get to choose the favourites. The favourites are loaded in the template, but you can load favourites at any time into any job that you have. If you don't have favourites already for labels you can import them from the template or there are special AAT files that you can import the label favorites from. There's a separate video about favorites if you're not sure how to import favorites into a job and you can watch that video. The first thing like with most things here you've got your layer that's pretty straightforward. The geometry method is very important for the label. What you want to watch is that you are using this geometry method here which is, you can see it here, it says that it's associate or independent. An associated label means it can read information from the element that you are labeling. An independent label is just plain text and that's it. So generally speaking you'll always want it associated. The other thing that you need to watch is this button here. It's what they call simple or detailed. The simple method it will choose a default arrow for you and just simply place the text. With the detailed method you get to click and choose where you want those things to go. So I can show you quickly. I'll click this sample one here just to get the settings for it. But if I choose that with the default you can see it's just placed the label with a default arrow. Whereas if I choose the detailed method I get to choose exactly where that arrow is what direction it goes, etc. So it's much, much easier to use. So basically have it set to the associated method and detailed. This here is the actual label itself that you want to use. I'm just going to concentrate on the plain auto text label for now. There will be other videos that you can watch that will go through some of these other labels that we use. And the reason I'm doing this is because some of these other labels are going to become quite important in how we document our plans. But as I say, I'll just concentrate on the auto text label at the moment. The next area is just text. That's just straightforward. Your font, your size, the color, is it bold or underlined, italic? That's pretty straightforward. You also have your justification. So depending on whether you want the text to be lined up on the left, you'd have it justified on the left. When you do a label like this, which is direct it over to the left and the pointer is on the right, you might want to justify it to the right so it, it lines up with the pointer a little bit nicer. So you can pick and choose your justification whether you want centered. The only thing you have to watch out for is when you have left or center justified, the pointer line can only go to the edge of the text box. It doesn't go into the text box so you'll have gaps. So it just depends on how pretty you want your plans to be, what you do. And of course you've got the justified both sides, which will just spread the text out in the middle. Leading, width and scale spacing, I won't worry about those. It's just adjusting the spacing of the text how you want it to be. Here you have what they call a text frame. This is off, or I can put a box around the text. And it will simply snap to that text. And I can adjust the size of the text, which I'll show you in just a little while. And that box will simply follow it. So with the box, you can also have a background fill. So if you want to place this text label over something, you could say, okay, let's put a white background fill over it. So in the middle of a roof hatching or something like that, you can cover up the hatching and you might need to use the display order to bring forward, send backwards, that sort of stuff, that's all. So we've got the box and that can be any color background fill you like. And you can also have a background fill without the text box. So you can please yourself there as to what you do. The text contour offset, 0.5 millimeters at the moment. If I make it something like two millimeters, 
you'll see all it does is adjust the spacing around the text that defines the box. Again, you don't need to have the box on. That spacing, the handles for the text will still be there. It affects the connection point. So whatever that spacing is, that's how far the text will be away from the edge. You can set it to zero if you want to, and it will simply snug right up to the edge of the text and there will be no surround for that text. What else have we got? We've got the pointer type. You obviously you can choose the line type, whether you want solid or dashed or whatever, and you can simply turn it off. If you turn it off, the text will jump because it's using a different text origin. You can see here, that's the actual origin that's being used at the moment, the center left side, and that is actually the end point of the pointer. So if I turn the pointer back on, you can see that point there that was there before, that's the origin of the label. It's just that with the pointer, you get to choose some optional spacing for it to say where the pointer line is. Of course, you can control the color of that line. You can also control the shape of that line. If you want hard angles, you can use that. If you want a curve, you can use that. And I'll just quickly exaggerate this. Um, you can see here, I can move the text around and that curve will move with it, same as it would if it was straight lines. And you can also use this one here, which I uh, don't see the point of. It adds an extra little kink at the bottom there. And you'll see things like this will happen. Is because this line is just not long enough at the moment. So we need to reposition that down a bit so that that line's a bit longer and the arrow can fit on the end of it. I don't think you'll ever use that one very much. You also have anchor points for where that leader or pointer line connects to the text. So it can be the top corner. Now this is showing off to the left, but that's because I've just done this label the other way around. So I've drawn it to the left instead of to the right. But you can have the top of the box so that it anchors to the top of the box. It can be in the center of the box. It can be the bottom corner of the box, or it can be at the bottom corner with an underline. And you'll see it actually extends the line there. That's the only time you can have the extra line going through the text. Any of the other options will not have that ability to have the line go through. You can also play around here with the angle. The angle that it shows here is the angle difference there. So you can set this. I could say, no, I want it nicely at 45 degrees. And you can see now I've got a nice 45 degree angle at that point. But it's just as easy to grab your label and start moving it around and just adjust it. I will show you all the movement and adjustments in just a moment. Depending on what other settings you've got, sometimes this, actually it's this one here. So when you choose that one, you've got this second angle in here and it's the angle of this line in there. So you can, you can adjust that, so instead of 60 degrees, again, I can say that's 45 degrees. I don't think this is an important one to worry about because again, we won't probably use that setting anyway. The arrowhead, just like dimensions, I guess, um, you've got all the different arrowheads. You can have the size, and the pen color, so you can choose the pen color that you want. You can hide the arrow at certain scales, so being a label, it's just like text, you can place it in any layer and any scale, and you might find that at a larger scale, say one is to 200, this will become much, much smaller, and the text will effectively stay the same size, and because this becomes much smaller, that arrowhead really doesn't work anymore so you can turn around and say look let's hide the arrowhead at any scale greater than 1 is to 200 or 1 is to 1000 or whatever it is so you do have that option if you want this option is not available to me at the moment hide with associated element the reason for that is this simply isn't associated to any elements anyway if you've got this on which it should be by default when we associate it to a wall or a chair or a roof or whatever it is you're labeling, as soon as you turn that layer off and that element gets hidden, even if this label was in a separate layer, that label will disappear as well. And of course it will come back when you turn everything back on. And likewise, if a label is associated to something and you delete that element, the label will delete because it's associated. The marker size is not available for auto text labels. On other labels, it will simply be the width of the text box. 
this section here doesn't really show with an existing label because it's already set so I'll just go back into defaults so this section here is where we can choose how that label is going to display on the plan or the elevation um, you can label anywhere you like and this is simply saying look run it parallel to the element run it perpendicular to the element always be vertical always be horizontal or at a set angle and with the set angle there's two types of set angles which I'll explain in a second we can lock that set angle so if I go over to here I've got a couple of walls on angles here and you'll see what these settings do so if I start here with the one that's parallel as soon as I click on this element here so I'm in my label tool and I'll just click and say look I want to label that you can see what's going to happen is the label is parallel to that wall if I clicked this element and I labeled this it goes parallel to that wall so that's fine if you want to do things parallel where that's handy maybe is door opening sizes you might want it to run parallel to the wall that the door is in rather than being at 90 degrees to it likewise perpendicular it will always be perpendicular to that object so no matter where I click you'll see when I click no matter where I click this particular point it will whiz off and go perpendicular to it sometimes they don't go exactly where you want them to go so we need to adjust it later well, I'll show you how to adjust them in just a moment always vertical just means that regardless of what you've drawn it will always be vertical and that's going to be the case even if I select this wall now and I choose to rotate that wall and I rotate that wall around the label will remain vertical with the other ones which were parallel and horizontal it would have rotated parallel or horizontal to this wall still that can be good can be bad just depends on the situation you want to do it for and of course this one here always horizontal I think you get the gist of it it's always going to be horizontal no matter what you do and that remains as I say when you rotate the element and also remains when you rotate the plan so if I was to rotate the entire plan view that label is just always going to flick around and be horizontal or vertical depending on what I've set let me put this back to zero this is the one that I recommend you use most it's a fixed angle where you define the angle of the text so remember zero is always horizontal 90 is vertical I can label this wall or element or whatever it is I'm labeling and the text will always be at that angle if I change that and say I want to go 90 degrees and I do another label out here you'll see the text goes up at 90 degrees so you can control that and of course you can select that label and you can come into this setting and I can type in here and set that label to that angle now the difference between this angle and the locked angle so you'll see regardless which one I do uh, oh sorry that was set to 90 degrees uh, because I forgot to change my defaults so I'll set that back to zero now I've lost my little leader it's there it's just very very short I can grab this and just simply depending on which one to use in my pet palette I can just stretch that out now if you watch this this one was a fixed angle but this is a fixed angle that's locked now when I rotate my page and I say let's rotate my page around and put it on an angle you'll find that's the fixed angle that was relative to the plan that's rotated this was the one that was locked so it's always going to be at that angle that I've specified there so it's always going to be zero degrees relative to my screen not to the page so if I set this back to zero what else have we got here use text as uniform pen you can see it's grayed out here that's only for what they call symbol labels this is just a simple text label at the moment and it has no scripting no 2d symbol as such we can actually create labels through the GDL scripting language that can do much more than just a simple text label and they can even contain pictures as well but using the text pen as uniform colors it means it won't use the scripted pens it will use the pens that you've set up here in the text options the optimized position is only applicable when you've got certain settings here so you can see 
They're always parallel, always perpendicular. You cannot optimize the position. When you have a fixed angle to the screen, so perpendicular, horizontal, or the fixed locked one, not just the fixed angle because that's not locked in relation to the screen. This option here, what that does, I've got a little sample here. The labels look quite the same. This one is optimized and that one obviously is not optimized. Again, what will happen is as you rotate the screen or the object, so as I rotate a screen in this case, if you look at these lines here, if I rotate the screen so that they're still not quite vertical, so they're, they're still on this side of vertical, nothing has changed too much. But the text in these ones, what have I used? I've used the always horizontal value. So the text is always horizontal, so no matter what I do. But if I rotate that screen a little bit more so that these leader lines are now tipping across the other way, what you'll see is the one that's optimized has decided that it needs to also flip the line to make it look a little bit neater rather than this kinking back on itself. So it's a minor thing, but it can be used if you want to. Generally speaking, it's not going to come into play too much because most of the time I'm hoping that you'll be using this one here, which is where you just have the fixed angle. But it all depends how much you rotate the screen, of course, whether you want the text to rotate with the screen or not with the screen. I would say that you, generally speaking, probably want the text to rotate with the screen, depending, again, how much of a rotation you're doing. Always readable just means that the text is always readable from the bottom or the right-hand side of the screen, just with standard text. And the wrapping text, as you can see here, the text wraps to suit the box. If I turn the text wrap off, or on and then off, you can see it's a cheat's way, and the same with text. It's a cheat's way of unwrapping your lines, but I can grab that box, grab the end node, and on the pet palette, as long as I say stretch, I can just simply stretch that back in. I can simply just stretch it out. But you can see you can actually make the text box much wider than what the text is. That's where turning that off and turning it back on again is a cheat's way to snap the box to a single line and match the box to the text. If you turn it off and you do stretch that box for any reason, it will automatically turn back on. Now when you're stretching the text, if you watch the box, you see how it's jumping? You can see how it's basically telling me how many lines. So if I stretch the box to here, I'm still at two lines, two lines, two lines. At that point there, it's jumping. I'm now going to three lines of text. So it's a kind of a an easy way to look at it and say, okay, well look, there it's jumping to four lines of text. At this point, it's jumping to five lines. I don't want five, I want four, but I want the box to be quite snug to that four. So I'll go to just to that point where it, it doesn't jump. And you can see that's exactly what it's done. It's four lines and it's set. So you can quite easily play around with the text. So stretching the box is always from that side of the box. So even the label that was off to the left, it's this side of the box that you stretch and you pull it out away from the pointing arrow. Depending on how you select your labels, you'll find that sometimes you need to click multiple times. You can select the label either by doing this and you're selecting just the text box. So effectively, all I'm doing now is affecting the text and you can see straight away I can just stretch that text box. If I select this point here, I'm selecting the entire label and the whole label is selected including these endpoints. When I go to select and adjust this text box, nothing happens. I have to do it a second time because what it's done is it's let go of that point. Now I have just my text box. Now I can stretch it. So it's a little bit annoying, but that's just the way it works. You need to select just the text if you want to stretch the text. If you want to move the arrow, the pointer itself, that's when you select the label on the pointer and you can now move these individual points around. Now, depending which option you choose here in the pet palette, the stretch or the move node, the stretch is literally just saying, I want to stretch that line. I'm not moving the text box apart from either vertically or horizontally. It's not affecting the position of it. You can see if I drag to this side, it's automatically jumping over to the other side. But all I'm doing is I'm stretching that node. If I say move node, what I'm doing is I'm moving that node and everything associated beyond that node. So I'm moving the entire text box as well. It's usually the one that you don't want that gets selected and you can move them around. Moving just this point here will 
will allow me to literally stretch that line. The other line, this first leader line, has to join to it. So as I'm going vertically, you can see it's having to draw now because I'm going below that line, it's having to draw something going out the other way. But essentially all I'm doing is increasing the length of that line and it has to join to this other first pointer line. So I can move that around. If I choose that move node, again I'm back into moving that and the associated line next to it is also moving. So I'm moving the, um, that. You can actually move this point as well. So if you want to, you can move it to another point. You can actually take it away from that element. That's not a problem. If it was associated to that element, it will still be associated to that element, even though it's not touching it. A quick way of telling if it's associated, as you go to select it, it will highlight blue. And if the wall, in this case, highlights blue as well, you know it's associated. So that means that if I move this element, the label will move with it because it's associated. If I delete that element, the label deletes. If I turn that layer off, the label turns off because it's associated. So even though it's not actually touching, it is still associated. At any time, you can choose to right click and you can say, convert to an independent label. And if you convert to an independent label, then that is no longer associated to that wall. It's got nothing to do with it. And it's now just an independent label on its own. And you can do what you like with it, you move it, delete it, whatever. It has no association to this. If you want to associate this label back to the wall or to any other element, you can do that. And simply just selecting it, holding down the control key. You might see the scissors depending on, in this case, because I'm in the arrow selection tool, I'm getting the control because it thinks I want to cut something. But if I control click on that, there's nothing to actually cut, so it won't actually damage the wall. But now when I select that, you'll see now the wall is highlighting and it's now associated. If I want to associate it with something different, I can say control click and I can associate it to that wall. And now when I select it, you can see it's associating to the other wall. It can only associate to one element at a time. So you can only have one element associate to one label, but you can have 10 labels on one element. So you can put multiple labels, but a label can only associate to one element, but the element can have as many labels as you want. Those labels can be in different layers at different scales. So you can have it say one thing in the floor plan, you can have it say another thing in the electrical plan and something completely different in the site plan. And you can also label things in sections and elevations as well which is quite good. Now, as a reminder, when you're placing the label, generally they're associated by default. Being a text label, I've alt-clicked on this, and by alt-clicking that earlier, it knows exactly what I want to type, so it's got the text in there already. I can clear that text. I have to come into the label settings to do this. I can clear that text off, and you can see here it's gone, and it's saying place the label to start entering the text. You actually can't type text in here at all. So you can't retype your label. You have to place the label and then type the text. But you can alt-click a label to preset the text, to set it as a default if you like. It also says here you can insert elements related to auto text, such as IDs and, and things like that in there. So if I place this label now, what will happen is I'll get the same label tool. Let's go for uh, zero degrees, might, might be better. Uh, because I've already started to place it, it's not going to do it. So if we place that label now and I place here, when I click, I now get the text box, same as you do for normal text. So you click once to place the text. I can either now define the width of the text box or I can simply click again on that point. So effectively double clicking and I can type whatever I like in here. And because I've double clicked, it's obviously just going to go on to one continuous line rather than me defining the length and have it auto scroll. Is that the right term? Change lines automatically. So when I come here and I place the label and I click, I can also use auto text. And you can use auto text from any of these headings, any of these sections, rather than going looking for it, saying, oh, I want to know what the fill type is, or I want to know what the area is, or that sort of stuff. What you can do is you can actually just type in here and you can say composite 
So if I type composite, it will give me a choice of things. Composite structure, so if I pick that, I can either click that and say add, or I can just simply double click this. And you can see what it does is it's filled out that bit in the text box for me. So I can keep typing in here. So it's given me the composite or the wall type or the wall name in there. What else can I put in here? Maybe the height. So again, instead of going looking, I'll just start typing. And I've got here all these options here. Oh, you can't make this box any wider. Or you can adjust the widths here. Maximum height of the wall. I've got general height, maximum height of the wall, minimum height of the wall. So you might have a wall with a solid element operation with a raking roof. So you can, you can do the minimum maximum heights. You can do different heights for skins. I'm just going to go for the general height parameter. So I'll double click that. So now I've got my auto text, 230 face brick plaster wall, 2.14 high or whatever I want to type. You can mix normal text and auto text, that's fine. You can add symbols if you want to. You can have this all different bold, orange, and three millimeter text, if that's what you want it to do. And you can adjust the label just as you can with any other text. But the really cool thing that is gonna happen now is this is associated to that wall. If I take that wall and select it, obviously if I move it, the label will move, but if I change that wall to a 70 mil steel wall, it's automatically changing. So it's, it's reading information from the element and changing it. If I change the height to three meters high and say, okay, the label automatically updates. So that's a really cool thing with labels and that's what I want to start using more on our plans. I've got a new object label, which I'll explain in other movies. So now your label is associated to the element and you can read information from it. I think that's about everything that goes into the basic settings for the labels. As I say, each other label, if I go into here, that's just the auto text label, all these other labels have other settings. They're for specific reasons, like you want to label a roof, the roof pitch, or I've got one here, object text label, which I'll explain in another video. There's a height label in here somewhere, brick course level dimensions that can put course heights on things. I'll do another video for that one. So all these labels have slightly different uses. Some of them, because they're object-based labels, some of these settings will not be applicable, but the majority of them are, which is why I wanted to go through this with you. I think that's it. So have a look out for some other label videos. Okay, thank you.